you know, most people have Creighton in the top 10 right now. Uh, Rothstein's got them all the way up at number three behind only North Carolina and Gonzaga. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and um, insist that's too high because he might end up being right. But it is a big jump to go from where Creighton was to where some people think Creighton is going to be um, based on uh, they lost two of their top three scores. And it's not like they enrolled the number one recruiting class in America, although Baylor Shireman is awesome. Six, seven senior um, average 16.2 points per game last season, six, six wing. Yeah. got 7.8 rebounds per game. You know, shot 46.9% from three on 5.1 attempts. I mean, I think he's going to translate beautifully uh, from South Dakota State to to Creighton, and, and they're you know they're adding another transfer from TCU, Francisco Farabello, Mason Miller, former top seventy five recruit, Mike Miller's son. Um, he's my little homie from Memphis. You know, he's a six eight shooter, redshirted last season. Perhaps he can make an impact. But I guess I would just say, um, and clearly, I think they're going to be good. But I, I, I would, I was surprised when I saw people jump them into the top five after Shireman committed, because you start trying to find examples of teams that were fifty and lower at Ken Palm. You know, they bring back a lot of good pieces, but lost two of their top three scores, and you know, don't enroll a bunch of five star guys. Or it's just, it's a big jump. Like I, I wouldn't look just randomly to see if I could find teams that went from 50 or lower in Ken Palm two years ago to last season. Really, really good. Auburn is an example of it. Uh, they were 60th at Ken Palm in 2021 and then finished 12th in 2022, but they added two first round NBA draft picks, yeah, <laughs> you know, they had a two first round NBA draft picks. Uh, so I am high on Creighton. I think they're going to win the big East, but I'm not as high on Creighton um, as some other people are just because, you know, typically, you know, t- to go from 50 or lower at Kim Palm to like top five at Kim Palm, you've got to add more than what Creighton is actually adding. Typically, doesn't mean it's impossible, but typically I'm not sure this is a recipe for making that kind of jump. Yeah, and again, Creighton fans, we we like your team a lot. I, I don't want <laughs> listen when you when you especially if you're like a Creighton fan and you know, and I'm gonna get to this in just a second. You know how good uh, or consistent your team has been, and you're thinking maybe you know this is this is the kind of year where we're going in, and we should be getting more buzz and hype than maybe ever. There's something to that, but I'm just saying, I have a tendency to want to push back on one or two or three projected league winners in a preseason because it doesn't always work out like that. I feel like Creighton might be that situation. My starting five projection would be Kalkbrenner at the five, Arthur Kaluma at the four, Shireman at the three, Trey Alexander at the two, and then Ryan Nemhard at the one. I will give the program and McDermott a ton of credit for this. You know, Creighton finished tied atop the league in 2020, which is the only time this happened since it got the Big East. And it's a bit forgotten, but the Jays would have been maybe a two seed, a three seed at worst if we had that tournament. That's a little bit forgotten a couple years later. The program has averaged 22.1 wins the past seven seasons, GP, and finished between 20 and 25 wins in each of those years. So it has been steady, 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 steady for the most part without having an NCAA tournament caliber team in just uh, two of those seven seasons. Five of the seven seasons, Creighton's been good enough to get to the NCAA tournament. And I'd say they overperformed expectations for, relative to what they were heading into last season. So if anything... I think Creighton's a tad undervalued nationally for how reliable it's become. And remember, this stretch I'm talking about, 22.1 wins over the past seven seasons, that is the post-Doug McDermott years. Okay, so they've done a really, really good job. Non-conference schedule-wise, they've got Texas Tech and Maui. The Maui bracket uh, was officially released on Monday. You want to talk about a crazy crazy contrast and styles Creighton versus Texas tech is awesome. And then they'll either play. That's one where for your tournament seating, like you want to beat Texas tech, not just because it'll be a good win, but if you win, you get a crack at Arkansas. If you lose, you'll play a Louisville team. That's not projected to be an NCAA tournament team in the first season under Kenny Payne. Um, So it's weird to me that Texas tech Creighton and Arkansas are in the top half of that bracket, but whatever on the bottom half, you've got the likes of Ohio state, 
uh, San Diego State, Arizona, and Cincinnati. So we'll see. They also have Creighton does. They're at Texas December 1st. That's the Big East Big 12 series, which got officially announced on Monday as well. Uh, so that's a wonderful game. Wonderful game. They'll host Nebraska. Those two schools play annually, of course. And then they are playing uh, BYU and Arizona State in Las Vegas in December. All told, all told Parish, that's a pretty presentable non-conference schedule to me, uh, given what Creighton is, what they're expecting to be. I think that's 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 pretty good. And the, and the program, big picture, has been able to sustain itself well after enduring. This gets a little bit lost as well. You know, Creighton was subject to a significant NCAA investigation following the FBI probe where one of McDermott's former assistants, I mean, I watched the video, was was on camera accepting money um, in, in, you know, in an effort to uh, to steer prospects and players to Christian Dawkins's uh, agency at that point. Uh, they didn't realize they were, uh, you know, on the take from the FBI, but McDermott, you know, kept his job. Creighton uh, endured some sanctions, but it has not put the program um, behind the eight ball. They've been able to to maintain it. And now they've got, they've got a fun, talented team. And yes, uh, a team that should be considered as likely as any other to win the Big East. The game at Texas, that'll be in Texas' new arena, right? Yes. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Um, and Creighton, it should be noted, has an incredible home court advantage uh, as well. Um, Probably I, I, a top five arena GP I have not been to that I want to experience. I've heard this uh, like pro style. You can speak to it, but pro style arena, great home court. Uh, I definitely maybe this will be the season I get out there. I've always wanted to go there. But uh, but you're speaking something that I've heard a lot of, frankly, media people and coaches talk about before. Yeah, um, I was there for Doug McDermott senior night um, where he went off. And it was obviously sold out. The game was on CBS Sports Network. It was Creighton Providence, I, I believe. And it was just funny. I was at the Providence shoot around that day, and they <laughs> they spent an hour talking about what they were going to. And then McDermott just came out. And it was like this. And, when he, and so when he gets the ball here, we're going to do this. And it just didn't matter. They, he, got, he got the ball and did whatever he wanted. It that was of, and I, like I could probably tell by my lack of hair and wrinkles um i've been doing this a long time now and that was one of my favorite you know game experiences that i've ever had like being in omaha that night for doug's senior night and watching him have that moment with his family in front of that crowd just being able to be a part of that like i i really felt like wow this is neat that i get to because i was on the sideline for it I, I, this is neat that i get to be a part of that so it's a it's a great home court advantage great environment and, um, you know, it, it, circling back, you, you ran through the starting lineup that you would project. I think that's exactly right. And if you want me to argue the, hey, maybe Creighton's going to be better than I think they're going to be. And I, I can't stress this enough. I think they're going to be good. I've got them 11th in the country. I've got them projected to win the Big East. But maybe they'll be even better than that. They are going to start, theoretically, four players who averaged double digits in points last season for an NCAA tournament team. How many teams are doing that? Yeah. Good Probably not, not, not many. Um, last season's team. I just, I, I always thought this was funny. Three of the top four scores named Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> that is that, is had that ever happened before? I'm sure it has, but I, I'm not sure it has. Yeah. I'm sure I'm there's not, a D3 team somewhere that had three of its top four scorers <laughs> named Ryan. I'm, in fact, I'm almost positive that's it, 